Hi everyone, this is Ian from snip to it and in this video I'm going to show you how to convert a photo to a multi-layer SVG you can cut with your Cricut machine or any other vinyl cutter. This technique can be used to create projects that you'll be proud to gift or sell. I would used this method to create tons of cut files that I've used for paper, vinyl, HTV, and stencil mask projects. My goal is always to create an image that both looks good and is easy to cut and weed. The image I'm using is a photo of my friend's dog, Bear. Over and over again, when people ask me for help converting photos to SVG files, they want to create some kind of memorial for a departed pet. I use the background remover at pixelcut.ai. Uh, this is a free tool that removes the background from an image and lets you download a transparent PNG file that is smaller than the original. I'm going to be using photop.com for this tutorial, which is a free online alternative to Adobe Photoshop. I've recommended it in many other tutorials, and it's a tool that I use for almost all of my Cricut designs. So to start, open up photop.com in your internet browser. I'm working on a Mac, but all of these steps work the same if you are also using a Windows computer. To open the image, click the Open From Computer link on the home page, or just drag and drop the file onto the main window. Image size and resolution are important factors that will affect your finished project. Open the Image menu in the top menu bar and select Image Size. This shows you the dimensions in pixels and also the resolution in dots per inch or DPI. My image is 1080 pixels wide with a resolution of 72 DPI, which is fine for this tutorial. After practicing this technique, I found that if you're using images smaller than 1000 pixels wide, your results are going to lack certain details. If you want a highly detailed SVG, use a larger image as your starting point. I've made this rule for myself. I want larger images when I'm creating vectors of people, and I want to use small to medium images when I'm creating vectors of animals. The fur tends to create a lot of texture that makes the cut file more complicated, so a smaller image reduces the details that I have to deal with. If you're not familiar with PhotoP, I'll give you just a quick tour of the important parts of the canvas that I'll be using today. You have the main toolbar on the left that has tools like the Move tool, pixel selection tool, uh, the paintbrush, and the zoom tool. On the right side of the canvas, you have the layers panel where you can see every layer of the image. At the top of the window, you have the menu bar where you can find all of the useful PhotoP functions. I'm going to do just a couple of basic editing steps before I start adding filters to the image. Under the image menu in the top menu bar, open adjustments and select hue saturation. When the window opens, just slide the saturation value all the way to the left, and the image will be transformed to black and white. I'm going back to the image menu, opening adjustments again, and selecting levels. This will allow me to adjust the mixture of black, white, and gray midtones in this image. I'm just going to adjust the sliders until they line up with the outer edges of this distribution graph. Before I go further, I'm going to convert my image layer to a smart object. When the layer is a smart object, it lets you apply filters and edits non-permanently, so you can always go back and make adjustments to the image later on if you need to. Just right-click the layer and select Convert to Smart Object. Now I'm going to apply the oil painting filter. Open the filter menu in the top of the window, select Stylize, and then click Oil Paint. Start by unchecking the lighting box to get rid of all this texturizing, and then set the radius value to 5 pixels, cleanliness to 3, and set scale to 0.1. Click OK to finish. And just to show you how the Smart Object feature works, you can see the Oil Paint Filter Edit show up here in the Layers panel. I can make it invisible, or I can click it again and make adjustments to the values anytime. Next, open up the Filters menu again, and this time select Filter Gallery. 
This is a collection of various artistic filters, and the one I'm looking for is poster edges. Set the edge thickness to 10, the intensity to 0, and posterization to 6. The next filter to add is surface blur. Open the filter menu, select blur, and then choose surface blur. Enter 20 pixels as the radius value and 10 pixels as the threshold value. Click OK to close. So now, I want to apply the oil painting filter for a second time. Just open Stylize, select Oil Paint, and enter the same values as before. 5 for the radius, 3 for cleanliness, 0.1 for scale. Don't forget to uncheck the lighting box. So finally, I'm going to open the filter menu, select Sharpen, and then choose the Unsharp Mask tool. Set the amount to 150%, the radius to 8 pixels, and the threshold to 8. So those are the artistic filters that I'm going to apply to transform the photo into an image more reminiscent of a drawing or illustration. Now I'm going to take a couple of quick steps to transform the image into a file that can be vectorized and cut. So first, move your cursor to the bottom of the Layers panel and open the Adjustments Layers menu. Add a Levels layer and a Posterization layer. These adjustment layers will allow us to make edits in a non-permanent way. They are not applied directly to the image layer. Now it's important that the layers are in this order, posterization on the top, then levels, then the original image. So click the posterization level first. For the first time, we are getting a preview of what the vector might look like. When you have three levels of posterization, you are going to get a black, white, and gray image. When you select two levels of posterization, you just get black and white. I'm going to select four levels so I can create a four layer SVG that will include a shadow layer, two gray midtone layers, and a highlight layer. Now I'm going to select the levels adjustment layer, and it looks very similar to the levels function I used at the start of this tutorial. I can move the sliders around to adjust the amount of black, white, and gray in the image. You'll see that when I adjust the black slider on the left, I'm also adding gray because I'm darkening the image overall. After I've made the posterization and levels adjustments, I can proceed to vectorization, or I can do some touch-ups to ensure that the file cuts cleanly with my Cricut machine. You can see there are some small objects and some ragged looking lines, and it's very easy to give them a quick touch-up. Highlight the main layer, and then click the Add Layer icon in the bottom of the Layers panel. This will add a new layer above the original but underneath the adjustment layers. There is a pull-down menu at the top of the Layers panel that allows you to select the Blend Mode. It's set to Normal by default, but when you open the options, select Overlay Mode. Next, select the Paintbrush tool from the left-hand toolbar. When the Brush tool is selected, there will be some adjustment settings in the top menu bar. Set the flow to 5%. The color options are at the bottom of the left-hand toolbar. They should be black and white by default, and you can select black or white as the active color. Then you can use the tool to clean up the image. Here's how these touch-ups work. Using the paintbrush tool, I'm going to use white to cover up any small bits of black or gray that would be difficult to cut with a vinyl cutter. Anywhere you see a speckle or a ragged edge, use the paintbrush to cover that area up. I use the term cover up because that's exactly what we're doing. If I make this overlay layer invisible, all of the original pixels are still there on the original smart object layer. Using the paintbrush on the overlay layer is another way we can make edits to the image that can always be changed, undone, or refined later on. I'm going to switch the paintbrush to black and use it to go over these existing black lines to make them thicker and easier to cut. Here's another tip if your image is a person or an animal. Pay attention to the eyes. I'm going to switch back to white and make sure that the eyes are well defined here. Getting the eyes right is one of the key factors in getting a good vector image. 
you really don't want that scary black pit look. You can see here that when I try a touch up on the edge of the image, I'm painting in the blank space. I don't want to color outside the line, so to speak. So after I undo that little mistake, I right click on the overlay layer and select clipping mask. This will attach the overlay layer to the original layer and not allow me to edit outside that shape. So now that I've made all the touch-ups I need, I just want to again emphasize that every edit, filter, and adjustment we've made is all applied in a non-permanent way that can be tweaked at any time. Our original image is still there under all of these layers. When you are finished with the touch-ups, it's a good idea to save your file. PhotoP will save this project as a PSD file, which stands for Photoshop document. All of the layers will be intact and can be edited in the future. I've still got the paintbrush tool selected, so I'm going to change it to the rectangle selection tool for the next steps in this tutorial. Now I'm ready to convert this image to a layered vector file. The first step is to take all of these layers and merge them into a single image. Select all the layers in the layer panel, right click the mouse and select merge layers. When I vectorize this image, I'm going to create a layered image so that every layer sits on top of the layer below. There won't be any gaps in the cut file when I cut this out of vinyl. The alternative is to create a knockout SVG where all of the color layers fit together like a puzzle without any overlap. So open the select menu and click on the color range tool. I want the tool to select sampled colors and I'm not going to change any of the default settings. In the preview window, it's showing all of the black portions of the image, although they are shown as white, so don't be confused by that. So I'm just going to click on any black area of the image, and this tool will select every black area. Click OK, and you can see that all of the black areas of the image are selected. Now, I'm going to right-click on the image and select Make Work Path. This will transform the selection area into a vector path. You can see that the selection highlights have changed from a dashed line to a blue line. That indicates that we are no longer highlighting pixels, but that we have a vector path selected. Next, go to the Adjustments layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel and select Color Fill at the very top. The Color Picker window will open, and I'm just going to select Black as the fill color. This creates a new vector layer that includes every black piece of my image. When I hide the original image in the Layers panel, you can get a look at the black vector layer that I've just created. We're going to repeat these steps to create a vector layer for the gray and white. Selecting the original image layer, open the Color Range Select tool, but I'm going to change one setting that will turn this into a layered SVG. Instead of having the mode set as Replace, Click the plus sign to add more colors. The black is pre-selected from the previous step, so when I click the darker gray area, it adds the gray and the black together to make the selection area. Click OK and you'll see the selection area covers the dark gray and the black. If you want to make this a knockout image, keep the selection mode as replace to select each color separately and keep following the tutorial step by step. So now, with the black and gray areas selected on the image, right click on the image and select Make Work Path. Open Color Fill from the Adjustment Layers options and you can once again click any dark gray area from the image to select that color as the image fill. Click OK. You can see when I hide the original image and hide the black layer, the gray area is larger and it forms a complete layer underneath the black layer. I'm going to repeat these steps for the light gray color as well. Open the color selector, make sure the selector mode is Add, then click a lighter gray area of the image. Click OK to finish. Then I'm going to right click the mouse on the image and select Make Work Path and fill the new path with light gray. Finally, I'm going to create the white layer using the same steps. Open the Color Selector tool, click any white area to select all of the white, 
and then convert the selection to a work path, and then fill the work path with white. Now I've got four vectorized layers in black, two shades of gray, and white. I'm going to delete the original image, then open the File menu in the top menu bar, and then select Export as SVG. The file will save as four vector layers only. When I open up this file in Cricut Design Space, you can see each layer of the file, and I've also added registration marks to make it easier to assemble the final design. You can see these SVGs have smooth lines that make them easy to cut and weed out of vinyl. And here's the finished image mounted on cardstock to make a thank you card. So this is a detailed look at how you can turn a photo into a vector. After you've done it a few times, you will be able to do this process in five or 10 minutes. I think the results are pretty excellent and certainly better than anything I've gotten with a one-click online conversion tool. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And if you want to see more tutorials, make sure you hit the subscribe button and like the video. If you want more crafting resources and project ideas, make sure you head to my blog at sniptoit.com. Thanks for taking the time to follow along, and happy crafting!